Hello friends, Steve from Southern Illinois again. I'm not feeling good today, but it was a beautiful day and I just didn't want to not be with you. But you'll have to forgive me if I don't sparkle a lot. This week has been kind of traumatic here in Southern Illinois for me. Uh, COVID is still raging. My doctors are still struggling in the emergency room with patients of all kinds, all ages, all diseases, not being able to be transferred to large hospitals. But even more so, COVID has struck home at a personal level. Two of our sister churches here in Southern Illinois have been decimated by COVID. I have two personal friends who right now are on ventilators and not doing well. And I'm not talking about, well, the doctors say that, you know, things are going on. I'm talking about they are on desperate last, last step futile measures and the families have been told to prepare themselves. And these were not old people. These were not people who were sick. These are real everyday people. Another, another church has a three month old in the same situation. Our resistance to accepting COVID as the new normal is coming at a very high price. A very high price. Around the world, around the world, okay? And I understand that, that um, change is difficult, and I also understand that the answers that we have from our human sources are imperfect and uncertain, and how do you justify change when the answers you get are not absolute? But in those communities that are pulling together, Things are very different. Today is 9-11, a day of remembrance here in the United States from the terrorist attack that happened over 20 years ago. And I'm seeing, seeing posts on Facebook of, we will never forget. What is it that we're trying to remember? Now, when some people say we'll never forget, that goes along with posts to the victims, posts to the first responders who died attempting desperately to extricate the people trapped in the Twin Towers. But there are other mimes that that are going around that say we will never forget we will never forgive and it reminds me of when I was a child growing up uh, December there was a day in December in my mind it's December 11 I may be wrong on that I didn't double check fact check myself that was marked on calendars in those days printed on calendars um, which was the day that Pearl Harbor was bombed and you know, the same sentiments were being expressed then, we will never forget. And I know I heard other people voice, we will never forgive. You don't find the bombing of Pearl Harbor on, printed on calendars anymore. I wonder why that is. Has the impetus to keep that event fresh in our hearts and in our minds dissipated for us as a nation? I think so. And we have also learned the dark side of what happens when we focus on one event and develop hatred and resentment towards a people group based on that one event. There are other kinds of days of remembrance. 
they're not all conflictual like this and they're not all tied to disasters in my wife's family and Vivian's family her brother Randy keeps track of everybody's birthdays okay he doesn't write them down they aren't marked on his calendar he keeps track of everybody's birthdays and on your birthday he not only calls you he calls all your siblings and tells them to call you because he knows that nobody else keeps track of things like this birthdays <laughs> birthdays the phone lines are just buzzing in Vivian's family not all of us remember birthdays at my son's wedding I warned his bride that things were going to be difficult at times that she needed to just hang in there and I told her that he was going to forget her anniversary and I had cued the bridesmaids to you know with this you know this this little jingle can't even remember what it is for sure. <laughs> Ari, you'll have to correct me, okay? Uh, something about staying strong or remaining true. And he's going to forget your anniversary, and the, the, the bridesmaids chimed in, stay true. And then I said, he's going to forget your birthday. And there was this choking amongst the bridesmaids, and they said, no! And Eric is up there in front of his wedding trying to defend himself. I know her birthday. I will remember it. Yeah, well, this year they both forgot their anniversary, so I am now a qualified true prophet. So, days of remembrance. Did you know God has days of remembrance? And no, I'm not talking about Christmas or Easter. God didn't set those up. Okay? God, there's nothing in the Bible that says remember Christmas. Christmas isn't even identified as a date. Um, Christ's birth, we don't know when it was. Uh, Easter is never identified in the Bible as a time for remembrance. But God has days of remembrance today. In Spanish, today is called Sabado. In all of the Romance languages, that, that terminology is used. It comes from the Greek and the Latin, Sabbath. Today, Saturday, is the Sabbath. And I know, and I'm going to be sensitive to this, because if you're still sharing this journey with me, you are far past being entertained by stories. You are joining me in the journey of seeking a spiritual walk, a, a deeper walk patterned on the lives of the people in the Bible. And the Sabbath was a touchstone for the people in the Bible. Two weeks ago we talked about Bible study and we used the Ten Commandments as the kind of the the laboratory where we were studying it because the Ten Commandments are the center of God's description of how we are supposed to live our lives and that's what we're talking about now we're, we're past theory we're now talking about the practical application what does it mean to live a spiritual life and how do we live a life that is thriving When my wife, my family, and I spent a year in Nigeria, I did a little, a lot of traveling with a team taking immunizations and medications out to rural clinics. And at that time in Nigeria, um, it was very common for people who were traveling to be flagged down by somebody along the road asking for a ride. Most people didn't have cars, and especially out in the rural areas where commercial transport was not readily available, 
private individuals often gave people a ride. And so as we were traveling, the clinic team almost always picked up somebody along the road and gave them a lift to, to, towards their destination. And Elkana, who was um, the clinic head and did most of the driving, okay, became a very good friend of mine. But he had this unique habit. <coughs> we would stop, pick somebody up, um, they would get into, into the vehicle, and in African culture, greeting each other is a very important part of meeting. And it would take about 10 minutes often for the greetings to be passed between everybody in the vehicle. Okay? Yaya Gajia, Yaya Gida. Okay? How is your family? How is your tiredness? How is your life? How is your work? And these are, these are ritual questions, a greeting, just the way we Americans say, hi. Okay? <laughs> oh, that's not a greeting, okay? That's like a, that's like a, a drop of water on a hot griddle. Psst. Okay? You have, to, you have to really ask questions. And the answer is always the same. We thank God or um, it, it's great. But after the greetings were completed, Elkina invariably, every time, would say, have you heard the good news about the Sabbath? Every time. Have you heard the good news about the Sabbath? Now, here in American Christianity, the Sabbath never talked about as good news. The Sabbath is part of the law. The Sabbath is done away with. The Sabbath is... We have a conflictual relationship with the Sabbath. Okay? But for Elkanah, this was good news. And so they would get in the car, we'd have the greetings. He'd, he would say, have you heard the good news about the Sabbath? And invariably, if they weren't already a Sabbath keeper, they would say, no, I've never heard about the good news about the Sabbath. What is it? And then he would launch into this Bible study, this guided tour of the Bible. And he would say, well, in Genesis, if you want to look it up, it's Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. In Genesis, at the end of the week of creation, after God had, had completed all of his creation, he set aside the Sabbath as holy time, and he asked us to rest on that day. In Exodus, people had forgotten about the Sabbath, and so he was teaching them all over again. And in the Ten Commandments, the fourth commandment reads, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And it's not just about going to church. The Sabbath is all about freedom. Freedom from work. Freedom from slavery. Freedom from oppression. Freedom from servitude. Freedom from want. Okay? Uh, it's a beautiful thing. And in that passage, in the Ten Commandments in Exodus, God says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Sabbath is a day of remembrance of creation and God's creative power and his creative love. When Moses retold the stories of his life in Deuteronomy, when he came to the Ten Commandments, he changed it a little bit. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, for I delivered you from Egypt so you no longer had to be slaves. Sabbath is freedom from the enslavement to productivity. You know, I don't know about where you're living, but here in America, a lot of people talk about, um, i got to work to eat. Yeah, and there's this real sense of, Man, you just got the life is difficult, and you just got to work all the time just to make ends meet. The Sabbath is God's promise that He will provide for you and deliver you from the enslavement of productivity. 
in the New Testament. Repeatedly, the Gospels tell us that Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath as was his habit. We never hear about Jesus not keeping the Sabbath. And he spent more time trying to correct the, the perceptions and the practices of Sabbath keeping than he did anything else in the New Testament. Paul, in, in the book of Acts, Paul, as his custom was, went to the synagogue every Sabbath. If, he, if there wasn't a synagogue, he would look around for a place where prayer was wont to be made. In other words, a place of retreat where prayer and a fellowship was, was easily done without having the intrusions of busy life or observers who don't or keep interrupting. And also in Acts, we find that um, Paul, before he was an apostle, where did he go looking for Christians to persecute? He went to the synagogues. Because every Sabbath, the Christians were worshiping in the synagogues with the Jews on Sabbath. So Jesus was a Sabbath keeper. The apostles were Sabbath keeper. And uh, Isaiah chapter 66 um, tells us that it's a part of the description of the new heaven and the new earth that God will create. Okay, It's the language that is repeated in Revelation. When Revelation talks about creating a new heaven and new earth, it's just reiterating the prophecy from the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament description, Isaiah says, from Sabbath to Sabbath, everyone will come together to worship. So from creation to the recreation, the Sabbath is a constant. And it's a day of liberty and freedom and celebration and fellowship. That's the good news about the Sabbath. So how does this play out in my life? Well, I grew up a Sabbath keeper. So Unlike some of you, this is not, not something that I had to learn as an adult and examine, what does this really mean? But I have to confess, okay, as a child, as a teenager, Sabbath felt like a burden, okay? When I would read in the Old Testament uh, passage, I believe it's in Isaiah, where, where um, the prophet has, uh, speaks for God and says, If you would seek my pleasure on Sabbath, it would not be a burden. Oh, that really cut to my heart as a teenager, okay? Sabbath was a burden. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. There were so many rules. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. And so when I would hear other Christians talking about how the Sabbath the Sabbath was part of the law and it wasn't a part of the gospel, there was a part of me that thought, wow, you know, maybe they're right. But the Bible said it wasn't a burden if I would just seek his pleasure on that day. Yeah, I stayed a Sabbath keeper uh, in my medical practice. Um, my office was never open on Sabbath for routine, routine services. Um, I answered emergency calls. I delivered babies. I took my turn in taking care of the pa patients in the hospital and in the emergency room. Because, you see, the Sabbath is a day of liberty. And Jesus said it's, it's good to do good on the Sabbath. And when he was challenged about his disciples doing something, oh, when he was challenged for healing on Sabbath, he said, don't you pull an ox out of the ditch when it's fallen in on Sabbath? How much better to help people? So there's this balance between rest, not work, and loving people and caring for them.
that is a part of the Sabbath. Okay? That's, that's how it's played out in my life. And I didn't realize how powerful this was. I mean, I knew that I enjoyed Sabbath, and I knew that I enjoyed having, as an adult, this time when I was no longer pressed with the responsibilities of work, when I could lay things aside. I didn't realize what a blessing it was until later one of the one of my children's friends who spent many sabbaths with us um, said you know Steve I just enjoyed coming to your house on sabbath so much and I thought hmm, that's strange I don't remember us taking her to church very much I mean she did come to church but not often and she said, it was because you were different on Sabbath. You weren't engaged in work, and you were present to the family, and you were present to us as kids, and you played with us, and you did things with us. And you know, the memories came back, and she was right. Sabbath was a day, not only did we go to church and worship and fellowship with other believers, it was a day when the entire day, because if, if you're a Sabbath keeper, this Bible says you keep holy, set aside for spiritual things from sundown to sundown, 24 hours. And so during that time span, our life was radically different from what it was the other six days of the week. And so we would often take the kids and go to a park or drive down to Garden of the Gods or or meet with other families and and um, do spiritual things together. Spiritual things as in singing. We sang a lot when the kids were at home. Um, and uh, we had these Bible games that to teach the children the Bible from, from the basic stories on up. Uh, yeah, Sabbath was and is a blessing in my life. So how did we get from this day of remembrance about God's creative power and about his deliverance in our lives to where we are today as Christians? Well, that's another story, okay, and a long, a long one in detail. But I just want to encourage you Sabbath is a part of the Ten Commandments. It is a part of the spiritual lives of everyone in the Bible. And when we try to cut it out, or when we are taught that it's been done away with, we lose one of the touchstones to spiritual happiness, thriving, prosperity, that was a part of the lives of the people in the Bible. Be safe, my friends. Please be prudent. But above all, keep looking up. I'll see you next week.